into our inner man. Amen. Please go with me to Psalm 89 verse 35. Psalm 89 verse 35. Psalm 89 verse 35. Psalm 89, verse 35. Yes, please. Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. Mm -hmm. Somebody said this is deep. This is deep. Once have I swore by my holiness that I will not lie to David. Jesus. Now, can you really understand this scripture? The sovereign God came to a point where he sworn by himself that he would not lie unto his own creation. He said, I swore by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. Now the question tonight is that it means that there is power in holiness. God sworn by his holiness that I will not lie to David. Let's look at something in Psalm 29 verse 2. Psalm 29 verse 2 and these two scriptures we are going to deduct the word of God for tonight. Psalm 29 verse 2. Yes. Please. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Take note. Number one he said he sworn by himself. He sworn by his holiness that he will not lie to David. Then he said in his holiness he gave a definition to his holiness. David said, I will give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. That is why God would not lie to David. Because David always gave God the glory that is due to his name. And David always worshipped the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Ladies and gentlemen, it means that God expects the body of Christ to worship him in beauty of holiness. Our lives should be a fragrance. Our attitude, our character should be holy unto him. And when we are holy before the holy God, and as he has promised by his word, he will swear by himself and he will never lie to us. In other words, whatever he promises us, he will do it. So tonight I want to entitle this, Holiness, the pathway to God's glory. Holiness, the pathway to God's glory. Holiness, the pathway to God's glory. I would like to say that God's promises a day of power in which he manifests his godliness and the whole life shall see his favor. Holiness proceeds power. Whenever we are holy, holiness proceeds power. When you develop in the love of God, you develop holiness. When you develop in the love of God, you develop holiness. Though there will be great stress in the last days according to the word of God. But those who are holy will use the word of God to be able to break through trials of life. 
and God will grant them divine opportunity for them to break through in life. This one, tonight, I want us to understand that you perfect holiness by using God's word. To cleanse you. You perfect holiness. By using God's word. To cleanse you. Therefore tonight. I want the body of Christ to understand that. Holiness. Is the pathway to God's glory. Holiness is the pathway to God's glory. Why? I want us to understand that for us to be in the glory of God. There are things that we ought to understand so that we may walk in the holiness of God. As God said unto David, I have sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto thee. If we want every word of the Lord to come to pass in our life, then we must walk in the pathway of holiness. And walking in the pathway of holiness I would like to give you principal clues tonight. Principal clues that will cause us to walk in the path of holiness. And the first clue to perfecting our life in holiness is that the church must understand that God promises that the church will experience a day of power. God promises that the church will experience a day of power. Now I want us to understand that the power of God dwells in holiness. That is why the first clue is that God promised that the church will experience a day of power. This can be found in Psalm 110 verses 1 to 3. Psalm 110, verses 1 to 3. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Verse 2. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power and the beauties of holiness. From the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. Amen. Hallelujah. Now here I want us to understand that if you and I walk in holiness, we obtain the power of God. In other words, in my introduction, I made mention of the fact that you perfect holiness by using God's word to cleanse you. You perfect holiness by using God's word. To cleanse you. But here God is saying that. He has promised the church. That we will experience. A day of power. A day of power. This simply means. Let me explain Psalm 110. Verses 1 to 3. To you tonight. I'm explaining it in three ways. Number one. The strength of God. Comes from you. The strength of God comes from you, the believer. The power of the Holy Ghost will come from you. Amen. That means that you will rule over your enemies. When you walk in holiness, God will grant you an ability. He will grant you the power to rule over your enemies. Then he went on to say, in number two, I'm explaining Psalm 110 verses 1 to 3. Number one, I said the strength of God comes from you so that you will rule over your enemies. He also went on to say the second point that he made was that when you put on holiness, power follows. When you put on holiness, Power follows. When you put on holiness, the anointing of God follows you. Therefore, you cannot be holy 
And the Holy Ghost cannot work with you when you are walking in sin. When you are not walking in holiness, the Spirit of God cannot work with you. When you are not walking in holiness, the power of God cannot administer his glory through you. It also means that the glory of God or the manifested goodness of God. Now, take note of this interesting thing. Anytime you come across the glory of God, when the Bible talks about the glory of God, it is also the same as the manifested goodness of God. So whenever we talk about the glory of God, it's the same as the manifested goodness of God. The Bible made us to understand that it will fill the earth before the rapture. That is why he said, my people shall be willing in the day of my power. And in the beauty of holiness from the womb of the morning. And thou, and thou hast the dew of thy youth. So God will manifest his glory before the rapture. Before the church is caught up. God's glory must be seen here on earth through us. Hallelujah. Because if we walk in holiness, we will see the glory of God. The Bible said with that holiness... No one can see God. Without holiness, nobody can see God. In other words, you cannot be in the body of Christ and intermingle yourself with evil. You can be in the house of God. You can be a minister of God. You can be a minister of the gospel and walk in unholy life. You can be a minister of God and not do the right things of God. Clue number two, clue number two, in walking in the path of God's glory, holiness, which is the pathway to God's glory. The clue number two is that holiness is having the same mind as God. When we talk about holiness, holiness simply means having the same mind. As God. That makes you holy. So you think like God thinks. You do your things like God will expect you to do. You do your things like Jesus will do. So holiness is having the same mind as God. This can be found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 16. 1 Corinthians 2.16 Yes, please. For who had known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. We have what? The mind of Christ. Say, who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? How can you know what God is thinking, that you can instruct God? But he said, we have the mind of what? Christ. We have been given the mind of Christ. In other words, holiness, I said, is having the same mind as Christ. Or having the same mind as God. This simply means that holiness has nothing to do with your outward appearance. Let me sound an alarm to the body of Christ. That holiness has nothing to do with your outward appearance. It is not how you come to church and pretend to be righteous. It is not what you put on that makes you righteous. It is not the prayer song that you put upon yourself that will make you righteous. It is not dressing in a unique garment that will make you righteous. It is not how you dress. It is not how you put on things that causes you to be holy. Holiness has nothing to do with your outward appearance. But holiness is bringing your mind in line with God's word. Holiness is bringing your mind in line with God's word. 
In other words, I think on God's word. I do what God wants me to do. I don't do what God does not want me to do. What God says I hate, I must hate. What God says I love, I must love. I must love the word of God. So holiness is breaking your mind in line with God's way. It also means that you must pursue holiness and seek to be at peace with all men. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, holiness is something that we must covet. Holiness is something that we must pursue. And when you are pursuing holiness, you seek to be at peace with all men. So holiness is also being in an atmosphere of friendly behavior. And when you are holy, you don't hold anything against anyone. Because wherever you go, you are your shoes of the gospel, the preparation of the gospel of peace is always put on. So holiness, you must pursue holiness to seek to be at peace with all men. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. Hebrews 12 14. Yes please. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. My God. You see, there are two things here that will cause us to see the Lord. So ladies and gentlemen, you can never say to me that the Lord spoke to me when you are walking in sin. When you are not holy before God, God will never speak to you. When you are not righteous before God, God will turn his face from you. Because it says, follow what? Peace with all men. And holiness. So peace and holiness, they go hand in hand. And without, no man can see the Lord. So when you don't follow holiness, and you don't follow peace, you cannot see God. So God only reveals himself to men and women that are at peace with one another. God reveals himself to men and women who are what? Holy. So if these two things are not found in our life, then we cannot see God. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be deceived because you cannot mock God. Church, it is time that the church of God understand this principle because holiness is the pathway to God's glory. Now let me stay here a little while. In Hebrews chapter 12 verses 14, I want to stay here and explain it in two main words. In two main forms. Will you permit me to now? Let me explain uh, Hebrews chapter 12 14 unto you with two main sentences. Number one, it means here that without holiness, you will not see God. His presence destroys what is unholy. Without holiness, you cannot see God. His presence destroys what is unholy. So when you are not holy, you can't see God. Because God's presence destroys things that are not holy. Unholy things. Follow peace with all men and holiness. And without which no man can see the Lord. Number two, in explaining Hebrews 12, 14. Number two, it also means... If you are unholy, if you are unholy, God will withhold his presence from your protection. If you are unholy, God with, will withhold his presence from you and from your protection. 
if you are unholy, God will withhold his presence from you. It will hold this protection from you. So ladies and gentlemen, here God is saying that we got to understand these two principles. Then let, when, let's go on again. He says, chaos occurs when there is disagreement. Chaos always occurs when there is disagreement. So when you walk in unholiness, chaos happens in your life. Things will not work for you because you lack the protection of God. Therefore, you've got to understand that everyone who embraces the life of holiness is a practical demonstration of the manifested goodness of God. Everyone who embraces the love of holiness, everyone who embraces the life of holiness, is a practical demonstration of the manifested goodness of God. Everyone who embraces the life of holiness is a practical demonstration of the manifested goodness of God. This means those who learn to say no to sin will be numbered among the shining stars at the end time. Those who learn to say no to sin will be numbered among the shining stars in the end times. Ladies and gentlemen, for us to walk in holiness, the body of Christ, the church, must come to a point to say no to sin. We must say no to unrighteous things. We must say no to unholy things. We must say no to our cursed things. The clue number three. Clue number three in walking in the pathway of God's glory. Is that the same questions stands be between the body of Christ and Jesus Christ. I'm going to explain myself. Let's put it down tonight. The same question, S I N, question, stands between the body of Christ. The body of Christ is the ecclesia, the called out ones, you and I. There is something that is called the same question. It stands between us and Jesus Christ. Are you with me tonight? Are you confused? All right. So therefore, the clue number three that we got to understand is that every time a trumpet sounds, it signals what lies ahead. Anytime a trumpet sounds, it always signals what lies ahead in first corinthians chapter 14 verse 8 first corinthians 14 18 for if the trumpet 14 verse 8 first corinthians 14 verse 8 yes please for if the trumpet give an uncertain sound who shall prepare himself to the battle when the trumpet blows the wrong signal, who will prepare themselves for battle? But when the trumpet gives the right sound, the church will be prepared for war. Therefore, if we, the ecclesia, the body of Christ, 
We are giving wrong signals to the world. How would they see the Holy God that you and I worship? If our life do not depict the gospel, how would they live a holy life? If the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself for battle? God wants the body of Christ to understand that there is a sin factor. But we got to take away that sin factor from our life so that we can be holy. He said, I am a holy God and those that worship me must be holy. God never moves without the way being prepared for him. Take note of something. The Holy Ghost will never work in your life when you are not walking in holiness. When you have not prepared yourself, the Spirit of God cannot use you. In Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 to 3, Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. Matthew, Matthew 3, verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Verse 2. And saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, Elijah. Elijah, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Amen. Prepare ye the ways of the Lord and make his path walk straight. It says something, it said repent. Repent from your evil ways. Repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Child of God, ladies and gentlemen, the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus is coming sooner than soon. It is time that the church arise and we begin to walk in holiness because God is coming for a holy church. Jesus is coming for a righteous church because it has been prophesied by the Isaiah that the Lord is coming for a glorious church. God never moves without the way being prepared for him. I want us to understand that in these last days, perilous times will come. In these last days, great stress will come in the last days. Great torture, great frustration will come in these last days. And many believers are going to compromise their faith. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. 2 Timothy 3 1. Yes, please. This know also. That in the last days, perilous times shall come. In the last days, evil things shall come. In the last days, men and women are going to divert from the gospel. They are going to do things that will please them. And out of their lifestyle, a lot of people are going to follow them. And they are going to lead many astray. Perilous time will come. Selfish men are going to arise from the body of Christ. Men and women that only think of after their stomach rather than the things of God. They will deny in walking in faith. They will deny the righteousness of God. And then they will embrace sin rather than holiness. Many will be destroyed. They will destroy many because these are the first people that always rush for titles. These are men that always rush for fame. These are men that always are women that always rush for prestige. And their lifestyle will lead a lot of people astray. 
They have become abusers of themselves. They embrace evil rather than the righteousness of God. The Bible said their conscience will be sealed with hot iron. They have no conscience. They have sold their conscience. How come that a, a person of God, a person that calls themselves a child of God, calls themselves a minister of the gospel, they do things that the world is not even ready to do. The world cannot even talk about, but yet they do it in the body of Christ, and yet people applaud them. In the last days, evil shall arise. For those who put on holiness, the trials of life will be opportunities for them to develop the love of God rather than for them to be defeated. God wants you to develop. In other words, God promises that the holy will never see any trouble anymore. God promises that the holy will never see troubles anymore. In Zephaniah, in Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 14 to 15, Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 14 to 15, Sing, O daughter of Zion. Yes, Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Verse 15. The Lord had taken away thy judgment. He had cast out thy enemy, the king of Israel. Even the Lord is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. My God. Those who are holy, ladies and gentlemen, the trials and afflictions of life will come. But the Lord will deliver you out of them all. He said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of the holy. But the Lord is God will deliver him out of them all. Ladies and gentlemen, affliction will come. But the God of Israel will be with you. Walk in holiness. He said, I am holy. In other words, the presence of God is about to come in the midst of the body of Christ. The presence of God is about to come in the midst of the body of Christ. That is why you must cleanse yourself or you must clean yourself up before Jesus comes. You must clean yourself up before Jesus comes. Or you will miss the time of your visitation. You must cleanse, clean yourself before Jesus comes. Or you will miss your time of visitation. Sometimes I laugh when I hear people on WhatsApp and things, they will say, I saw the Lord. The Lord spoke to me and Jesus is coming soon. The Lord said to me, then the question I ask myself, you that is talking about it, are you ready yourself? The Lord is sounding an alarm. Is the church of God taking heed of it? This is the time that we go to walk in holiness. If we don't walk in holiness, ladies and gentlemen, we will miss our timing. Because Jesus, remember, is coming for a holy church. Jesus is not coming for your pastor. Jesus is not coming for the prophet. It's not coming for the Pope, the Archbishop. It's not coming for the Bishop. Jesus is coming for a glorious church. Are you holy? If you are not holy, you will miss the time of your visitation. I 
I want us to understand something that Jesus wept over Jerusalem because they missed the time of their visitation. Jesus wept because when Jesus got to Jerusalem, they were not prepared. And Jesus said, as it happened, so shall it be in the midst of the body of Christ. Jesus is going to come very soon. But when he comes, are you prepared to be raptured? Ladies and gentlemen, it's not coming for what you have done. Sometimes I sit back and sometimes you ask yourself, so all the flying around, moving from this nation to this nation, and if you miss the mark, what is the point? What is the point? It is not about the hotels you sleep in. It is not about the luxury cars we drive. It is not about the mansions we live in. It is holiness unto God. When it comes, are you prepared? Are you prepared? Are you prepared? Are you prepared? Jesus wept at Jerusalem because they missed the time of their visitation. When you read Luke chapter 19 verses 41 to 44 that was the account. Ladies and gentlemen please can I submit to us at the body of Christ that we don't want to miss the time of our visitation. Clue number four. Clue number four. To God's way, the path of glory. Cleanse yourself from all spiritual and mental impurities. Cleanse yourself from all spiritual and mental impurities. We're going to cleanse ourselves from all spiritual and mental impurities. In fact, Second Corinthians chapter seven, verse one. Second Corinthians chapter seven, verse one. I want to bring out certain scriptures to you know illustrate the word of God for what we have said because I don't want to say anything that is not found in the scriptures. Second Corinthians seven one. Yes, ma'am. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Let us therefore cleanse ourselves from all uncleanness, from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, what are you doing in secret? What are you doing in, the, in your inner chamber? In the secret of your secret when you are alone? What are you doing? Are you holy? Perfect. Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 21. Today we want to run with me. I want to bring out the same thing. I want to bring some scriptures to speak about them so that you know it's not in one area no i want us to understand that anytime god mentions certain things in various terms that he means it hallelujah that is why i said something when god mentioned he said i am the lord your god i your god i hate divorce i hate divorce i hate people who walk in sin when God says he hates something and he repeats it first time, second time, third time, you can't change it and tell me it is better. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you? Because I said holiness is having the same mind with God. So if you are not having the same mind with God, you have missed it. You have missed it. You have missed it. The reason why God had to confuse the mind when the people were building the tower of Babel, the reason why he had to confuse their mind, 
because they were building for themselves not to the glory of God. Second Timothy chapter 2 21 Second Timothy 2.21 yes, If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good way. If you will purge yourself and walk in holiness, you will be a vessel of honor, sanctified, meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Ladies and gentlemen, can I repeat myself tonight? The Holy Ghost can never, never, ever use you when you walk in sin. The Holy Spirit can never, ever prophesy through you when you walk in sin. He is holy. He said in the book of Habakkuk, I am a holy God and I cannot look into evil. How can God speak to you when you are walking in your own ways? He would not. Ladies and gentlemen, watch out. Church, watch out. Check. That is what the Bible said. The Lord said to you and he gave you a commission. He said that what? You've got to watch all spirits. Check them out. Check their lifestyle. Check their attitude. Check their home. A bishop must be a one of one wife. If you can't put your house in order, you cannot put the house of God in order. Finito. Don't mock God. He's not a liar. He said, I, because of my holiness, I will not lie to David. Who are you? James chapter 4 verse 8. James chapter 4 verse 8. James 4 8. Yes, please. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. And purify your heart, ye double minded. My God. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why God is not answering us is because we are not holy. But if you are holy and your hands are cleansed, God will purify you. If your heart is pure, and you don't have a double mind. You see, there are a lot of us that whenever you are doing something for somebody, you have an ulterior motive. Ladies and gentlemen, you are not a blessing. Never do good for anybody and expect anything in return. When you do that, you have missed your blessing. Are you hearing me? If you bless somebody because you want the person to do something for you and to receive something back, ladies and gentlemen, you have missed the mark. Say, oh, no one anything except love. And after you have helped everybody, say to yourself, I am a wealthy servant. I have only done the duty of my do anything for anybody and respect anything in return. Don't have a double mind. Your mind must not be here and when you leave here on Friday night, you'll be jumping the same way in the discourse. Your best friends are people who serve to do all kinds of evil. Your, fa- your best friends are alcoholics. Your best friends are people who have divorced from their husbands, divorced from their wives, and then they are doing all sorts of evil. Have girlfriends. Those are your best friends. Ladies and gentlemen, you will be polluted. The unrighteous act can defy you. Unrighteousness defies righteousness. 
The Bible says, Blessed is the man who do not sit in the seat of the scornful, for his delight is in the word of the Lord. If you mingle yourself with evil men, God consider you as evil. Watch where you go. Watch your friends. And know the type of friends you keep. He said, I am a holy God. I have sworn by my holiness that I will not lie to David. Psalm 18. Psalm 89 verse 35. That is what God said. Now, let's look at something in John chapter 3. First John chapter 3, sorry. First John chapter 3. Verses 2 to 3. First John chapter 3 verses 2 to 3. I'm talking about cleanse yourself from all spiritual and mental impurities. Cleanse yourself. Cleanse yourself. First John 3 2. Yes, please. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doeth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him. As he is. When he we appear, we shall be like what? Him. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. And every man that had this hope, and every man that had this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Everyone that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is what? Pure. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't see God if you are not pure. You can't see God when you have not purified your heart and purified yourself. First Peter chapter 1 verse 16. First Peter chapter 1 verse 16. First Peter chapter 1 verse 16. Because it is written, be ye holy. For I am holy. Oh my God. For it is what? Written. Be ye holy. For your God is what? Holy. Which temple are we? This is the question we must ask ourselves. The God that we serve is holy. And we must be. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 11. Second Peter chapter 3 and 11. Second Peter 3 11. Yes, please. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? We must be in holy conversation and godliness. What are the words that comes out from our mouth? Do our speeches, do our words, do our actions glorify God? That is it to depict holiness. We must ask ourselves. We must ask ourselves. In cleansing ourselves from all impurities and spiritual contamination. How do we do so? How can we do that? I want to give you keys to that. How can we purify ourselves? We can do this, please, if you will, if you can write this down. Cease from doing works of evil. You can purify yourself. You can cleanse yourself from spiritual and mental impurities by doing this. Cease from doing works of evil. Cease from doing works of evil. Why am I saying so? You can go with me to Isaiah chapter 1 verse 16. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 16. Isaiah 1 16. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Cease to do evil. Put away evil doings. Watch your act. What are you doing? What are you watching? What are you looking at? Cease doing it. 
it also it also goes on to say in other words please if you can put this down perfect holiness in the area of your thought life perfect holiness in the area of your thought life your thinking must be holy Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 14 Perfect holiness in the area of your thoughts, love. Jeremiah 4.14 4, Yes, me. O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge be, be within thee? Cleanse yourself. Never let unholy thoughts remain in your mind. Never let unholy thoughts remain in your mind. Why am I saying so? Because you've got to understand that the mind is a fertile ground. It's a, the mind is the battle place. Theologians have postulated the fact that the mind is just like the form. It's like the cloud. When the cloud gathers for a long time, they fall as rain. Ladies and gentlemen, what you hold in your mind, if you keep negative thoughts in your mind for a long time, it will form as a rain or it will produce a seed. And then the Bible said the heart is a fertile ground. When the seed is, germinate, uh, is generated, it will fall into your heart. And when it falls into your heart, the offense is committed. So the only way you can stop the offense being committed is for you to guide your mind. Somebody say, guide your mind. That is why you should not entertain vain thoughts in your mind for a long time. That's why the Bible says that cast out. Cast it out immediately. It also means wash away any sin through repentance. Wash away any sin through repentance. That means by praying. And by staying in the word of God. Wash away any sin through repentance. By praying and staying in the word of God. This means you must take a spiritual bath. By meditating and reading the word of God day and night. You take a spiritual bath. By meditating and reading the word of God day and night. It always brings me to Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. I always say this is the complete Bible. Let not this book of the Lord depart out of their mouth. The book of law shall not depart out of their mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success in other words everything in your life must be properly aligned with God's way before he can manifest his goodness in your life. Everything in your life must be properly aligned with God's word before he can manifest his goodness in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, holiness is the pathway to God's glory. In other words, God promises a day of power in which he will manifest goodness and his will will be seen in our lives. 
Holiness precedes God's power. When we develop in the love of God, you develop holiness. Though there will be great stress in the last days, but those who are holy will use the trials of life as an opportunity to develop character. You perfect holiness by cleansing yourself with the word of God daily. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to embrace the word of God. We need to perfect holiness. And through that, the Bible said, without holiness, no man can see God. But we can see God if you and I decide to walk in holiness. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that from today we will change our mind. We will look up unto him because his coming is sooner than soon. He can come tonight. He can come tomorrow. How prepared are you? God is only coming for a holy congregation. Are you holy? Be holy for I am holy. The Lord bless you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that any word that I have that did not come from you. I pray that you will cleanse me with your blood. What I said, oh God, that did not bring glory to you. Spirit of the living God, patch me with your blood. I pray that, Father, you will grant us the strength and the power that it will live a holy life, to convert and to perfect our life. You just heard a powerful word from Reverend Dr. Jerry Oteng, Senior Pastor for Global Harvest Ministries UK. If you have been blessed by this message and would like a copy on CD, please call 0208 691 3172 or email us on info at globalharvestministries.co.uk. Do visit us anytime you are in London. We are located on the first floor, 100 to 114, Lone Pit Vale, Lewisham, London, SE3. 